What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to create an estimate with Quantifier Pro. So Quantifier Pro is an extension for SketchUp designed to help you calculate costs based on what's in your model. So part of the reason I wanted to talk about this extension is that um, it's currently on sale through August 31st. So if this is something you've kind of looked into, this might be a good time to check this out. I will link to this extension in the notes down below, but let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I thought I'd kind of show you, kind of start to finish, how you could create an estimate using Quantifier Pro. And in this situation, we're just going to create a simple stretch of wall in here. So it's going to have like stud framing in it. It's going to have plywood and siding and other things like that. And so I wanted to start off and just talk a little bit about how to calculate different things. So I'm going to delete my uh, default model out of here. But basically, the way that Quantifier works is it allows you to apply costs to objects based on a few different things. So for example, the layer will allow you to select a layer inside of your model and then apply a cost based on different things on that layer. We'll talk more about that in a second, but this is where you're going to add your cost per linear foot or your cost per cubic yard, other things like that. So you can also apply materials based on the, or apply costs based on the square footage of materials in your object. So we use this to calculate a lot of different areas. So you can also just apply costs in general directly to an object. So if you just want the object to have a certain cost associated with it, you can use this to do that. And then you can also use this to add overall cost data um, independent of actual objects. So this we would use for things like adding your overall fee or if you had like a permit cost or something like that. But let's go ahead and let's start off um, by calculating out the earthwork for our foundation wall. And so the way that we would do that, and note that you want everything in this add-on to be in here by tag. So everything you model needs to be on a tag or um, these used to be layers. So for example, let's say that we wanted to calculate out the earthwork for our wall, right? So let's say this is our plane and our wall is going to be probably three feet deep. And so I'm figuring for my wall, you know, I've got an eight inch wall, so maybe I'm gonna go we'll call it 16 inches in one direction and maybe 16 inches in the other direction. Basically what I'm doing is I'm modeling out the actual area of the excavation I'm gonna have to do. So we'll say we're gonna do this at a 45 degree angle. So we're just going to use the protractor in order to model this out. And we're basically just modeling out the profile of our, of our uh, earthwork. So I'm gonna flip this. So scale of negative one move this back over. Then we're just going to take this and we're going to extrude it the length of our wall, right? So in this situation, the length of our wall, uh, let's go ahead and let's call it 16 feet for right now, just as kind of a general calculation. And so what I want to do is I want to take this whole object and I want to place it in a group, right? So I'm going to take this group, right click, and I'm going to click on make group, and I'm just going to label that group excavation. And we'll put it on a tag labeled excavation. And so now, because this is a solid group with a, a volume associated with it, we can go into quantifier and we can go find the excavation layer and our layer cost data, and we can add an object. So in this situation, I'm gonna say that my excavation is gonna have an input of cubic yards, right? So it's gonna take this and it's gonna figure out my cubic yardage. And then we can apply a unit cost to our structural excavation. So in this situation, for example, let's say that our cost is going to be, we'll call it maybe eight bucks a yard, or you know what, let's, let's go a little higher. Let's call it 15 bucks a yard for right now. I'm not expecting any waste in this situation, so I can just click on okay. Well now, if I click off of the object and then I click back onto it, you can see how this is going to update with that information in here. So what we have is we now have an object with cost associated with it. And so we have our excavation in here. That's probably a layer that's generally gonna stay off, but I've calculated this so that I have it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model out my wall. So I'm gonna do three feet and we'll say this is gonna be four inches one way. It's gonna be eight inches the other way. It's like this. So what I've done is I've done drawn the profile of my wall and I'm just gonna exclude or extrude this 16 feet. So then I can triple click on this wall, right click on it and make it a group, 
right? So in this situation, we're going to call this, we'll call it grade beam. And we want to make sure that we put it on the grade beam layer, right? So grade beams, drop down, grade beams right here. So now, notice if I click on this, inside of my Quantifier Pro component report, this is showing up with things like the length of my extrusion, the area of my extrusion, as well as the volume of my extrusion. And so let's change the way this is reported out. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on this button right here for report settings. And we're just gonna change this so that our area shows up in square feet, our volume shows up in cubic yards. We're gonna say, we can leave our width, height, and length in inches for right now. And we're just gonna click on okay. Well, notice how now these show up as cubic yards, area, things like that. And so now, let's say we wanted to calculate the cost of this grade beam, right? If you think about it, there's really two, maybe three factors that go into something like this. So the first factor is gonna be your material cost. The second is going to be your labor cost, and the third would probably be any equipment costs or anything like that. Um, so there's a few different ways you could do this. So if you're doing more of a high level estimate, you could approach this just by going into your layer cost, and you could just apply a cost to your grade beams layer of just overall cubic yards. Right? So what we've done is we've added an item in here. It's going to take the cubic yardage of your item and it's going to apply a cost to that. So let's say that this grade beam, for example, is 600 bucks a cubic yard. You can add a waste percentage in here, maybe like 5% or something like that. Maybe a tax percentage in here as well. So you could come in here and just calculate this based on an average cost per cubic yard to place uh, grade beams, right? You could definitely do that. So if I was to click off of this, you can see how this is gonna give me a value of $803 for that. And we're assuming that cost per cubic yard is going to be all encompassing. So that's one way you could do this. Another way you could do this is you could also in here, instead of having this just be your overall cost, you could have this be your grade beams material. And you could say that your concrete material is gonna run you like $132 or something like that. And then you could also use the face square footage in here. And so notice how this is giving you an area in square footage in here as well. So that is the area of one side of your surface, right? If you were to click on this one, you'd also have an area of 48 square feet. So you could come in here and apply a forming material cost. You could set that to be your square foot and you would set your factor to two because you want it to calculate this on both sides of your wall. And then you could set your forming cost at whatever forming cost would be. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So we'll say 20 bucks a square foot and then click on okay. Well now, you can see how this is applying a cost for your concrete material as well as a cost for your formwork. And you can kind of look at the calculation that's happening by clicking on this button right here, the cost inspector. So what that allows you to do is select an object and it'll show you what's calculating in here. So in this situation, for example, you can see that this is calculating grade beam material here at a cost of $132 a yard, as well as a forming material cost of $96, uh, or 96 square feet at $20 a square foot, which I think is kind of high, but that's okay, we'll leave it as is for right now. So you can see how this is calculating out the cost by selecting this object. So the other way you could do that if you're not comfortable with the way this calculates the area, you could also apply a material to both faces in here, and then just call that formwork material. I'm not gonna worry too much about that for right now. But now, let's model out the stud framing on top of our wall. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna model the profile of one stud. So in this situation, this is gonna be centered right here. And, and so let's say this is all gonna be two by six framing. So I'm gonna model out first a base plate. So I'm just gonna draw a line of 2.75 inches. We'll draw this up an inch and a half. Draw a line across of five and a half inches. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just modeling out the profile of my base plate, All right? So I'm just gonna draw this across like this. And then I'll triple click on it. I'll just make it a group, or we may call it a component. Let's go ahead and make it a component. And we'll call it stud base slash top 
plate because we're going to copy that to create a top plane. We want to make sure that we put that on a stud framing layer so or tag. So notice how if I click on this, this gives me an overall length of my piece of wood. So I can basically come in here and just model out all of my pieces of wood and then just apply a cost per linear foot for those. So we'll go ahead and model out a vertical stud and we'll give it a height of, we'll call it, let's call it 10 feet for right now. Um, and then we'll just triple click on it. We'll make it a component and we'll just call this one stud vertical. And you could name it if you wanted to depending on what you're trying to do. But let's say this is gonna be at 16 inches on center. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna make a copy using the move tool in copy mode, 16 inches. Then I'll type in like times 10 or 12, something like that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm modeling out these stud pieces, right? And then I'm just gonna move this so this aligns. Then I'll make a copy of my base plate right here. And I'll move that up at the top so I have a top plate. So, and I'm not sure if there's usually two top plates or not in here. This isn't really intended to be like a stud framing video, more of a how to calculate cost video. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take these. We're gonna make sure that they are all on that stud framing layer. And then we can go into our layer dollars, find stud framing, and we can add an item for a cost per linear foot, right? So just stud framing foot. And we'll leave the factor at one. We'll put our unit cost at, I'm not sure what two by six stud framing is installed. So let's say 250 for right now. Then we can also apply a waste percentage, right? Cause you're gonna have some additional waste and other things like that. So maybe 15%. And then we'll add a tax rate right here and click on okay. Well now you can see how each one of these studs has a cost associated with it. One thing you might want to do is select them all and put them in a group. Maybe label that like stud framing in your outliner. But now if we click on this object, you can see how this shows us all of the cost associated with these studs. So you can see how we have like $500 worth of studs. And if you wanted to, you could also apply like a small tools factor or something like that in here as well. So you can add an item like small tools. And we'll say you get like one cent per lineal foot or something like that, or maybe like three cents a lineal foot and click on okay. So what that's gonna do now is that's gonna add some dollars in there for small tools. And obviously this wall is too small for that to really matter. So you would wanna adjust that cost, but that gives you an easy way to add the cost for your stud framing. Well then we could model out the plywood sheathing, right? So I would draw a rectangle across this face and then I would push pull it out by the thickness of my plywood. So maybe like five eighths of an inch for a sheathing. And all I'm gonna do is within that face, I'm gonna apply a material to one side of that face. So I'm gonna apply a wood plywood knots material to this. And I'll just triple click and I'll put this in a group. So we'll say make group and we'll create a tag for plywood sheathing. We can take this, put it on a layer but in this situation, we don't want to apply costs based on a layer, though you could do it based on the square footage in here. I'm gonna do it based on the material. So if I click on the material right here, you can see how we can find a material, in this case, wood, plywood knots, and click the plus button. And we can apply a cost based on your surface area. So in this case, square footage. And so let's say plywood material, 5 8 inch, is going for 232 a square foot. So one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to apply a waste percentage, right? Because we haven't really gone through and calculated out the number of sheets in here. So generally speaking, and this isn't always true, I mean, I think it depends on the size of your project. A lot of the time you're gonna add a waste percentage in here just to kind of cover like different overlaps, right? Cause this is gonna come in four foot by eight foot sheets and you might not be able to get um, full coverage out of your sheets. So you're probably gonna need some waste material in here. So again, I'm just going to apply a 15% waste factor to this. And I'm going to click on OK. And then again, what I have here 
is I have a cost associated with my plywood sheathing right here. So then we could come in here and let's say we've got like an air barrier layer. So I would do the same thing for air barrier layers and um, like siding. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed this part of the video up because it's getting really long. But I'm just gonna add a couple layers for those different items. All right, so now if we take a look at this assembly and we're just gonna select the whole thing, just so we have it all selected, you can see how this shows us all of the costs associated with this object, right? So um, we could also, with component report selected, click this button right here to get a report of what's contained in here. So for example, we've got the cost associated with our grade beams in here, as well as the cost associated with our siding, our sheathing, our stud framing, other things like that. I think I forgot to apply a cost to the building wrap layer. Or actually I turned that building wrap layer off. So you need to make sure that's on when you select this. So now that's gonna show up in here. And we probably need to have our excavation shown as well. And so let's say we needed to add a cost like um, let's say building permit or something like that. So if we went to our model right here, this would allow us to just add a lump sum item, right? So let's say building permit, no clue how much this is gonna cost. So we're just gonna say this is gonna be an each. We're gonna give it a unit cost of $550. That's gonna vary wildly depending on what your project is. But we're gonna click on okay right here. Well now let's export this to Excel. So there's a few different kinds of reports that are in here. So let's go ahead and export a cost detail report. So that's gonna have all of our cost data in it. So we're just going to create this report and see how this has items in here for each one of these. So it's got our building permit cost, our excavation, all of that different kind of stuff. Well now, let's say we wanted to export this to Excel. Well, all you need to do is just click on the button for CSV uh, it's going to ask for a character to separate columns. The comma is fine. That's just something Excel will use. And we're just going to click on save. And it's going to ask if we want to open this exported report. In this case, I'm going to say yes, and it's going to open this in Excel. And so now if we look at this, you can see how these items are in here um, on a per each basis, right? So they've got an overall cost um, based on the units. They've got a tax cost, other things like that. And so then you could kind of adjust this. You could apply codes to this inside a quantifier or other things like that. But then you can just take this whole thing and you can just summarize it inside of Excel. But then you could also add things like fee, right? So let's say you wanted like a, we'll say 9% fee. So we could take this times 9%. You could add other costs in here as well. So contingency, whatever. Um, if you have a project where you can do that. So we could just do like a sum times 0.05, something like that, and then you could do a total. So now that these are in Excel, you can take these items and really do whatever you want with them. So I, I would say overall getting cost items from SketchUp to Excel with this extension is actually pretty easy. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Again, remember this extension is on sale through August 31st. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you have used anything for doing estimating inside of SketchUp, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.